I've won it six years in a row. A long time, and that has been, of course, the role of uh, blacks in the American West. Uh, it's something that's really something I've been talking about and doing lectures on and presentations on for, man, I guess a good 20, maybe 30 years. I stumbled upon, again, some photographs that had been done by, or were collected by the Historical Society, like in, I guess in Kansas or Nebraska. Uh, and those images, uh, again, were so striking. It showed, again, blacks as cowboys, uh, as outlaws, and as just regular folks. And what I've done over time is I've taken those images that I collected oh, 20, 30 years ago, and I've used those to explain the West to a lot of young people. Uh, there's one, again, that looks at this black family on, on the Nebraska prairie and a sod house behind them. It was just a great sort of opportunity to say, uh, how is this family doing? And for young people to look at and say, well, uh, look like they're wearing nice clothes. I said, well, that's true. I said, because many people, uh, there are people who took, you took, they took photographs of in the West who basically were wearing just basically work clothes. But this family had, again, nice, sunny to go meeting clothes. Uh, and then behind them was a buggy, uh, a buggy which meant that it wasn't a work wagon, it wasn't something that you had to do to, to earn a living, but just was a pleasure ride. And that this was an indication of, again, how well they were doing. Uh, these kinds of stories, which are really fascinating to me, but I think also intrigue other people. Uh, because often there's either the image that there, there are no blacks in the West at all, or the image of, well, if there are blacks out there, they must be, again, uh, as servants or, or of that kind of capacity. And when they can see blacks as cowboys or see blacks, again, as people who are doing well, uh, it just helps to sort of change people's image. Uh, of course, I guess the whole idea, and one thing I grew up with, too, is the idea that I had no idea there were black cowboys. When I grew up, again, I could uh, go to the movies and I could see Gina Autry and later on television, Roy Rogers, but Hobbelon Casty and a number of folks like that, but never ever see a black face on the screen. To really discover that there were black cowboys and they were really a part of the functioning American West was quite a revelation to me and I think a revelation to a number of people. I'll tell you a story that's kind of interesting. I've been doing these presentations on black cowboys for a long time, and so I've got my cowboy working clothes on, my cowboy hat, I've got on my cowboy shirt and my chaps, and I've got my boots, I've got my spurs on. And I was going to make a, I was making a presentation to a middle school in, uh, again, in Augusta, Georgia. And so I'm standing there waiting to go on, and uh, the auditorium, it's the auditorium area, and a young black kid comes by, and he's looking at me, and he starts to laugh. And he laughs so hard that he finally falls on the floor in a fetal position. And he stays there for a while. Later, he kind of drags himself up and walks away. In that whole period of time, which was probably a good four, five, six minutes, he never said a word. I didn't say anything. He didn't say anything. When he walked away, the thought that was crystal clear in my mind was that when this kid saw me dressed like a cowboy, it was just too unbelievable for him to accept that he had seen, it's, in seeing me stand there dressed as I was, it was just a, a height of incredulity. He just couldn't accept it. He couldn't believe it. It was too farcical. And that his response was only to laugh and laugh basically until he was exhausted and then walk away. Uh, that was also a great optic lesson for me and how important it was for, again, young people, young black kids, but also young white kids, other kids, et cetera, to in fact see black cowboys, to know that black cowboys were very much a part of the past and that there's still men today that do that kind of work who are black. And that was an interesting experience and one that, again, I thought was, uh, was meaningful. I've told that story many times and it's, it still intrigues me as I, I think about it. Uh, and that's at least one of the reasons why I, I do the things that I do. That's one of the reasons why I go out and make presentations and I speak to audiences all over uh, in terms of that, yeah. Cowboy Mike Searles, thank you very much. It's been my pleasure.